about African American jazz era poetry, in particular Langston Hughes. And the title of my lecture is called Keeping It Real. And we're going to find out what exactly that means. What do I mean by that? So that's me. I'm with Teach Now Education. My name is Emil Nicolescu. Uh, it's a Romanian name. Do you guys know what Romania is? Anyone? In the chat. But in Europe, actually, Romanians are viewed as another race by Western Europeans. Um, Europeans thought that all Romanians are gypsies. Why is this relevant, really? Because I'm going to talk about race. And so I want to stress that on one hand, I am not, I do not completely understand the black experience because obviously I'm not black, but I will try to do my best. And by the way, and I apologize in advance if anyone is uh, that I will refer to African Americans as black just because it's easier for me to to speak. But if I say black, I mean no disrespect. So that is my background. So let's get to the lecture. So Langston Hughes, brief life. He was born in 1902 in Missouri. His father left as soon as he was born, his mother as well, to seek employment. He lived most of his childhood with his grandmother in the Midwest. Now, obviously, there are a lot of white people in the Midwest, right? He grew up loving books. In high school, he was an elected class poet because he was black. Quote, unquote, he had rhythm, which, of course, it's ridiculous, but it kind of gives you a, an idea of the kind of racial stereotypes that existed and possibly still exist about black people. He briefly lived in Europe, but then he moved to New York. And this is important to talk about New York because that's where all his uh, cultural artistic activity took place in New York. He became an important writer of the Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s, and he died in 1967. And again, by no means is this a, this is actually a brief presentation um, because it's a, it's a brief lecture. And I really want to talk about the poetry. Now, what is the jazz era? Because Langston Hughes flourished uh, at a time in America called the Jazz Era. Does anybody know anything about the Jazz Era? Go ahead and answer in the chat if you if you know. Jamie or Layla or Peyton or is it Sienna? Is that correct? Correct, Sienna, yes. So, so the question is, what do you know about the jazz era? Just anything, one word. How would you describe the jazz era? Okay, that's fair. So, so this jazz era was, was concentrated in Harlem. And if it gets too complicated. But basically the idea is that, uh, right. So, uh, right. So Peyton says it's a form of self-expression born in Louisiana. Are you speaking of jazz or?
Right. And and by no means am I an expert in this type of uh, music. And to me, what jazz is, it, it came out of out of blues. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So it's a combination of 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 of, of slave music. So black, uh, so blues in the beginning, right? It was part of the black slave experience. They're basically, basically working songs. And then as, as blacks moved to New York, right? So there you have the civil war in the South and a lot of blacks went to, to the North, right? To seek more opportunities and to live with less racial tensions, right? So they brought blues with them, and out of jazz came out of the blues, right? And it, it became something that it transformed to vaudeville blues, for example, right? Which was like a more refined blues. So in this era, in 1920s, so 1920s were an era about, you know, you heard about the speakeasy, you heard about the prohibition, there was a lot of drinking because the government actually banned drinking, so that created more drinking, and there was, a, a, you know, and there was a lot of music, right? So blues and jazz kind of combined black and white audiences, right? But for the black population, blues, and jazz were like a form of, of racial identity and expression, right? Because it was their music coming from, from the slave experience. Right, Peyton? You had a, a comment? Is it, is this, does this make sense so far? And by no stretch of imagination, this is not a comprehensive, I'm not an expert on jazz, I'm not an expert on the black experience. So, right, so you have to understand that. But overall, you know, this is, the point is that in Harlem, the blacks and the whites came together and they were attending these musical sessions in in the bars and they play where they play, play jazz and blues all right it's pretty uh, okay so what happens next if i can move this here so now langston hughes was a central poet of this Harlem Renaissance in 1920s, right? As I said, he moved to New York. He moved to New York. He, he first started at Columbia University, a very prestigious university, right? And he was proud of his black heritage, like the blues, right? But he was also realistic about the actual life of the blacks. But some people didn't like how he was writing about African-Americans. For example, a Pittsburgh newspaper ran a big headline and, and said, Langston Hughes, book of poems, trash. Another headline, a New York newspaper said, Langston Hughes, the sewer dweller. Another newspaper in Chicago characterized him as the poet low rate of Harlem. Okay, so when we think about, you know, celebrated poets, famous poets, you know, don't assume that everybody love them, right? Even by their own people, right? So keep that in mind. So what did the Harlem, did there are different versions of the 1920s, right? Where we hear things and, you know, when we think about Harlem in the 1920s with the jazz era, we have all kinds of, images in our minds and where do these images come from they come from from our culture right i don't know about you but to me one of the representations of of jazz comes from the film cotton club made in 1984 it costs a lot of money 
He won a lot of awards. So what was the Cotton Club? Cotton Club was a famous club bar, jazz bar in Harlem, right? In, in that jazz era. And so you have one representation. I'm going to try to um, show you this YouTube to show you what I'm talking about. Wealthy. Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they romanticized? Are they idealized? Hmm. Yes, Layla, they're wealthy and happy. They are dressed as if they're wealthy. Yes. Sienna. Yes, very good. Kalista. I love your answers. Keep keep them coming. Yes, very clean cut, right? And I want to ask you another question. Do you think Oh yeah, a couple of white people, right? So Cotton Club so jazz in the 1920s had a huge huge white audience, right? So so what if you look at New York, if you look at the island of Manhattan, you know, you have downtown Manhattan, right, where the white people lived. And then you had Harlem, which is above where the white people live. I mean, it's like in 19, in the hundreds, right? So New York, the, the, the island is divided in, you know, goes from First Street to all the way to 160 or 70, right? And Harlem is around 120, I think, 100, between 120 and 160. I'm not sure exactly. You like the tap dancing. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so the point is that, that, you know, whites and blacks came together at this cotton club. Cotton club. But, but, but the question is, is this a, a real, was this a real picture of, of the black experience? Do you think that was the, the how most black people lived or looked? Ha ha, they're amazing, yes. <laughs> yeah, but this is, I want to stress, this is a glamorous version of, of the black experience of Harlem, okay? So let's move on. Now Langston Hughes had a different version. Now he was he was proud he was proud of his, his black heritage. But as I as I I titled my lecture Keeping It Real. And as we're gonna read this poem, think about who is being shown in the poem. Think about the speaker of the poem and what he's looking at, right? When, when is the black experience shown in the poem? In the twenties, uh, that's an easy answer. Where is the black experience shown in the poem? And how is the black life shown in the poem? Yes, <laughs> yes, the brothers. They 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 had a little kiss. Yes, they're, they're very tender towards each other. Absolutely. Um, and so that ultimately we need to discuss how the black life is shown in the poem listen to it but poems are also about you know text and the images especially the images of black life that this poem creates so on one hand I showed you a glamorous life, right? In the cotton club scene, right? The jazz era. So now let's see what kind of images do we get from Mr. Langston Hughes? Or his speaker, right? So we, we should not identify necessarily Langston Hughes, the black poet, with the speaker of this poem, right? So keep that in mind. 
because I'm going to ask you questions about the speaker of the poem, not Langston Hughes, what Langston Hughes is thinking, right? So here we go. Drowning a drowsy syncopated tune, rocking back and forth to a mellow croon. I heard an ego play down on Lennox Avenue the other night by the pale, dull pallor of an old gaslight. It did a lazy sway, it did a lazy sway to the tune of those weary blues. With his ebony hands on each ivory key, he made that poor piano moan with melody. Oh, blues. Swaying to and fro on his rickety stool, he played that sad raggedy tune like a musical fool. Sweet blues, coming from a black man's soul. Oh, blues. And far into the night, he crooned that tune. The stars went out, and so did the moon. The singer stopped playing and went to bed while the weary blues echoed through his head. He slept like a rock or a man that's dead. Okay, that's the poem. So what are we looking for here? Who is speaking and singing here? And use poetic term like the speaker or narrator. Who do you think is the narrator? Is he white? Is he black? What do you think? Can we really know? Anyone? Calista? Uh, okay, well, I, I'm not sure there's any indication that he's Spanish, but... So basically, when you're looking at poetry, you gotta look at these basic questions of who is there, where is taking place, and how this is portrayed. And so I'm just gonna fast forward through, through my lecture because I ran out of time and I apologize. But what is essential here is, does the speaker really understand the black experience? Okay, that's the really, the central question. So you have basically in the poem, you have someone who is looking at a blues piano player, you know, playing in a, in a club on Lenox Avenue, down on Lenox Avenue. And I read a, a critic that says that this is very important to realize where this is down on Lenox Avenue. So what this implies is that this may be a white person who came from Manhattan, okay, from the lower numbered streets, came down, traveled to Lenox Avenue, 142nd, where the Cotton Club was, okay. So we cannot assume necessarily this is a black person describing a black person. Do you have any other indications that this person who's describing the piano player is not close to the actual black person? The, the central question is, really, and I'm going to fast forward to the central question. It's right here. How does does the speaker does the speaker of the poem who's portraying the scene in harlem get inside the black experience or does he stay outside do you think he really understands the black man who's playing the blues or is he merely an observer because i think that's one of the central ideas of the poem and if you know the answer, go ahead and type it. Again, the central question is, do you think the speaker is close, understands the black man, or 
he kind of understands what the black man is going through who's singing the blues he's saying that my life is hard but i'm gonna make it or he does not understand the black man at all so you have three options he does not understand the black man's experience he kind of understands what the black man is going through or he they're like twins he totally understands what the blues man is talking about Layla, is that a statement or a question? He kind of understands? Are you saying he, he kind of understands? Are you asking me? So what is your opinion? Okay. So Layla is saying that he kind of understands. And why... What is the reason, what, where do you think he, he, what is the evidence that he kind of understands? Yes, Layla, I think I, I think I agree, yeah. Exactly, Sienna, also excellent point. He's not black himself, he's not black himself, he wouldn't understand. Even though the black man, is singing the blues and he's saying that you know life is hard and my life is hard and i got to put my worries on the shelf there is this thing in the last line that is really telling what he says the singer stopped playing and went to bed this is like the speaker as if He's like following. So after the bar, the speaker is as if he's following the blues man to his house. Or he imagines him. The singer stopped playing and went to his bed while the weary blues echoed through his head. So here we, we feel like the speaker could possibly understand. But does he really understand? Because the next line says, he slept like a rock or a man that's dead. So... I think, in my opinion, and I want your brief opinion as well, you know, in my opinion, because the or word, like he doesn't really know, he's just imagining what the black man is going through, right? He either slept like a rock after the, the jazz performance or the blues performance, he either slept like a rock or he died, right? But he's not sure. You know, and I think that's what poetry is, is great. I think why why this poem is great is because, you know, it makes us realize that, you know, jazz was not all about glamour, but it was also about the hard life of of really just unknown blues players who 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 did not wear fancy clothes, right? And you know, and there you have these white people who came down from Manhattan and, he, and they watched the performance, but they didn't really understand. And I think I would say this is like an anti-jazz era poem, you know, because I think the speaker remains outside. Yes, he kind of understands. Yes, he's watching the performance. Yes, he, he listens to the, the sweet and sad jazz uh, or blues, but he doesn't, he's not really sure. And I, and I get that from from um from the from the language he says he slept like a rock or a man that's dead he i think he remains outside the black experience does that make sense to everybody do you agree with me or you disagree